Through his 96 years of life, Paul Berg found science exciting and always worth sharing. At Stanford University School of Medicine, he created a community spreading his passion for biochemistry as a leader, researcher, teacher, and mentor for 64 years. Born to Russian immigrants in Brooklyn, New York, Paul Berg credits his early enthusiasm for science to his high school science club advisor, Sophie Wolf. She was a person who turned me on to the idea that finding out things you didn't know was exciting. When Stanford moved its School of Medicine onto the main university campus in 1959, they created a new biochemistry department, recruiting Arthur Kornberg, a leader in the field. Kornberg brought his team of seven scientists from Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis, Missouri, including Paul Berg. Berg, a Stanford football fan since childhood, loved the idea of living in California. He came to Stanford with his wife, Millie, who he met at Penn State, and their son, John. Here, they entertained students and colleagues at their home, enjoying art, music, and traveling the world. Together, Millie and Paul were dedicated to protecting and improving life on this planet. They shared 75 years of joy, adventure, and purpose. It was important to Berg that his department and his home be on campus so he could interact with people in chemistry, biology, and other fields over dinners, over tennis, in hallways, and in labs. The inspiration comes from the interaction, talking to each other. That's, that's one of the things which we don't take account of. It's just the in very informal interactions over coffee. During the 1970s, Paul Berg and his colleagues developed a technique to splice two DNA molecules, leading to the start of recombinant DNA technology. In 1980, Berg won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his work on protein synthesis and recombinant DNA. Everything I needed to do that experiment that earned the Nobel Prize was sitting in Arthur Kornberg's refrigerator, and I had access to it like it was my own. All the enzymes that we had to use and some of the tricks of how to use it were all known to all of us. Berg also pushed for safety. He organized the 1975 Asilomar Conference, where researchers hammered out guidelines that allowed experimentation to proceed under federal oversight. The recombinant DNA made it possible to do things that people could only yearn or imagine if they, if they only could do that, but now they were able to do it. And it was clear that what it was going to do was change the face of medicine. In 1985, Berg helped to establish the Beckman Center for Molecular and Genetic Medicine at Stanford, serving as director until 2000, then as director emeritus. He was a generous donor to Stanford and an effective fundraiser, gaining funds for collaborative modern campus facilities. Paul devoted many hours to establishing the six-year Berg Scholars Program at Stanford to encourage MD students to pursue careers as physician scientists through a shorter training period and financial support. I say sooner we get people started and experiencing the, that excitement as a student and making something work or understanding something that people were puzzled by. It's a big thrill. Once you get that, I think you've established a higher probability that they will continue to want to do research. I enjoy science and talking about it, talking with people about it. I'm not the one who sits there trying to think through things. For me, science is interactive, and for me, that's where the fun comes from.